million dollar allotment must have been greeted with a sigh of relief and a lot of joy. You know, there's always uh, a certain amount of unknown. And, um, you know, when, when we heard that uh, our, our project was scored as one of the highest, uh, if not the highest, and um, that we were going to be fully funded uh, with the SBA grant, $25 million, it, it, uh, it certainly made uh, the day seem a lot better. I thought yours would have been the largest. I guess there was one district that had asked for it a little bit more uh, than you folks had asked for, uh, Ron, but yours was one of the larger grants uh, that was awarded on a day where I think it was $111.8 million was given out. Wood County, I guess, asked for $27.9 million, and they were the largest request. Berkeley right behind there at uh, $25 million. Uh, let's talk about uh, the award and uh, how will they distribute these funds to the school system and at what point do you expect to get the first dollar? Well, um, I asked those questions yesterday. This is uh, a relatively new process for me as well. Mm -hmm. And um, our, our grant will be written as a, as a $25 million grant, as, as we would requested, uh, it will be paid over multiple cycles. Now, what that means is uh, they'll, they will pay uh, portions of that over uh, approximately three-year three, three year period of time uh, while we're uh, in the midst of our planning and construction. So um, they would like to see them be able to break that down into, into three equal payments, but that may be um, – you know, that, that's not official, and there, there may be some, some – um, some, depending on how much money is available on each cycle, there may be some difference to that. This $25 million, Ron, for the construction of the two schools you're hoping to build, what percentage of those costs will this $25 million cover? Uh, the $25 million covers about 35% uh, of our projected costs, um, between 35 and 38%, uh, and it really – Really comes down to the um, the actual costs of the uh, of the schools. In regards to inflation, is there a fear that these uh, costs will go up before you have a chance to finish the school? Well, Rob, inflation should be a four letter word. If it's not, <laughs> uh, it, it certainly is uh, is something that is offensive and it's scary to uh, especially the school systems because. You know, we we operate on on limited budgets, uh, working with our communities to to pull these projects off. Um, yes, it's always a concern that uh, that inflation is going to is going to affect the uh, the bottom line. Um, and in years past, there have been opportunities to to go back to um, the school building authority and ask for for additional uh, portions to help uh, finish finish projects. We have been able to utilize um, uh, a number, a square footage number that we feel is is the most accurate of the uh, of the projects. And they felt that way too. We built in inflation, um, calculated as closely as we could uh, when we presented this. So we feel pretty good with our numbers. But yes, anything can happen. You said this will account for about a third of the expense. Where will the other two thirds come from? Uh, well, this is this is to supplement bond projects. So the, these uh, these are projects that we are going to um, that are are in our most recent school bond, um, and the the money to build these uh, these facilities are in our bond. The um, the school building authorities supplemental money that that we applied for are going to be able to um, pro provide an a more elaborate, not elaborate, but a more comprehensive school. So we're going to be able to build a little bit larger, a little bit more with the money that they're giving us. These are projects that we were going to, uh, that we have to tackle anyway. Matt Miller. So, Ron, how far along are you in the process? Uh, it, when when I hear that the governor's handing out a check and, and you've got this opportunity at $25 million, uh, are, are the plans and everything already in place and that's where you base the amount that you ask for? Or does it now go before an architecture plan and, and all of that now gets developed? In other words, how close are you to, say, breaking ground? Well, uh, you know, that's, uh, that is the $25 million question. How close <laughs> are we to breaking ground? Um, 
you know, we, we're, we were a little bit ahead in, in the process because, as I said before, these are projects that we were, that we were prepared to, to tackle um, even if we were unable to secure the grant money from, uh, from the school building authority, um, although they would have been scaled down. So what we, what we have already done is we've secured our architect. We've, we've already come up with plans. We've done our, um, the uh, ed specs portion of that, uh, the educational specifications. Uh, we've purchased the land. We, you know, we've, we've taken a lot of, um, a lot of steps that a number of the other um, districts have not done yet. Um, so breaking ground is going to be a matter of us now zeroing in on the project with with the uh, additional funds, making sure that we have the one that we want. Um, and you know these are these are buildings that we hope to be in um, by the 26, 27 school year. All of these buildings. So Ron, this is John Gilstrap. <clears throat> Does the, good morning. Does the money arrive in the bank and then and then it's spent, or is it to reimburse expenses? So do we do we spend first and then get the money, or do we get the money and which we then spend? Well, we, we're in a very fortunate uh, situation, uh, and this is the way districts like to do things: is, is to be able to couple this uh, and pair this this uh, award with money that we already have. Um, there are some districts that don't have that luxury and don't have you know, the, the, the community support and a bond, and they have to wait for this money to come in before they can do anything. We're in a situation where we can go ahead and get things started um, expecting this money to come in and supplement the bond money that we already have. So um, while this, this is important for us so that we, we're going to be able to complete the projects uh, to, the, um, to the scale that we, that we had hoped, uh, it's not a situation where we have to wait for that money to come in. Now, we're going to be, like I said, this is probably going to be in installments uh, once every three years. Approximately a third of the money will come in each time. Um, you know, but we we will be able to pay for a uh, majority of the work out of a bond while we're waiting. To your knowledge, this is kind of a competitive process or a number of people were vying for the funds, but it's a big fund. Do you know if, if any requests were denied, not of ours, but across the board? Well, there's 55 counties and all 55 uh, have, have needs. Uh, about half, 27, actually presented acceptable um, applications. And I know that there were a couple of districts that, that uh, attempted to to get some applications in at the last minute, but their applications were incomplete and not accepted. So, you know, about half of, of the schools uh, of the state's um, school districts uh, applied for this. I know that there were 27 that were considered, and there were 19 districts that had awards. Not all of those districts' complete amounts were awarded, however. Um, I don't know that on every district's uh, project and their and their request, but just in listening to the presentation yesterday, I know that there were a handful of districts that were were funded partially. Um, I can't really give you the details on those, but I would say 19 districts are going to see um, grant money from the school building authority, and you know dur during the last few years, you're talking about. Um, the, the, the total amount in the school building authority that they were able to give out reached about half of what they gave out this year. They, there was there was more available this year. Um, more districts saw some uh, grant awards, and um, you know I was in a room with a lot of excited people because they're going to be able to do some do some good things with that. Listening to that announcement, I, I kind of picture standing against the wall at recess and we're picking teams <laughs> for the kickball game and you're waiting for your name to be called. Am I going to be last or uh, were, were you kind of in that anticipation mode? Did you have any idea that you would receive something or, or even all of the amount or you're, you're like that kid against the wall waiting to be picked? Well, you know, I go back to, you know, in, in 2020, our CEFP, our local um, plan, began. 
and conversations with school building authorities started back then. Uh, so this is, you know, it's more than just lining up, you know, on the wall um, and getting picked. There was a whole process of trying out, basically, if you wanted to put it to that, it'd be like if you had uh, recess tryouts for two years before you lined up on the wall and were picked. Um, and, you know, over the last, the last year, we, we made good cases. We talked to just about every member of the of the staff for the school building authority and a handful of the of the board members. You know, what do you need? What, you know, how can we make our presentation um, the best? Um, how can we make sure that our needs are are viewed as being uh, appropriate by the by the committees down there that are deciding these things? We felt like we made a very good case. Um, and I'll tell you, we had a, a great team. A um, number of people uh, have, have worked on these projects, and um, you know, we transitioned a few of those people here even in the last year. But um, that, I felt like there was a great presentation for, for our district. They, they had a very positive reaction to uh, the things that we presented. We were actually able to get some of the members of the school building authority um, to come to of Berkeley County and, and do a tour with us to see the needs. So, you know, we felt good about it, but there's always anxiety. There's always anxiety until the, until the, until the governor's gavel dropped to, to close that meeting yesterday. You were just um, wanting to make sure that you heard the truth. Ron, I know you need to get going here. Any final thoughts? No, I, I um, just very excited and very proud of the Berkeley County team that put this all together. I want to thank the people that, that made it possible. Um, and, you know, I'm very happy for, for Berkeley County's um, community and the things that we're going to be able to do with, with the, the community support. Um, I know that the community support and our bond had a reflection on how much the, um, the selection process what they were willing to invest in um, in districts. So the districts that had community support and had some money to put towards projects, you know, school building authority was uh, much more likely to go in and match uh, some some funds so or provide some funds. So I just want to say thanks to everybody. Thank you guys for giving us an opportunity to, to reach out and let our community know where we stand. Thank you, Ron. Appreciate your time. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Take care. Thank you. Superintendent of Schools Ron Stevens, the uh, superintendent's uh, position on that, and now the board vice president, Board of Education Vice President Jackie Long via telephone. Jackie, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us once again. Good morning, Rob. This is an exciting day for Berkeley County Schools. It's like a Christmas morning, I would guess. So you get a $25 million award, Jackie. And uh, I saw that Wood County had a bigger award of $27.9 million. Otherwise, uh, Berkeley County by far uh, the most of any of the uh, district's uh, funds that were requested. And uh, if you could, tell us about the two schools these are targeted uh, towards. A K-2 primary school, a new K-2, 3-5 to five primary intermediate school where, where are those schools, Jackie? Uh, they will be down um, close to the – there's a Sydney National Bank um, in the Marlowe area, mm -hmm. down close to where Rude's Trucking used to be. If you're familiar with that area, it will be down in there mm -hmm. um, on that property. Um, and we, we still have a lot to do there ground-wise, but um, – uh, it's great property, um, and uh, I think the schools are will be in the exact spot they need to be for that area. There's speculation that that will be the location for the next high school, too. Is that fairly accurate? Well, we haven't talked about that at all. That I don't know where that came from, but the board hasn't discussed that. So. Oh, all right, it, but uh, that's on the radar at least. Anyway, do you have a do you have a uh, an idea when there might be another high school, Jackie? Uh, we're up, it will be up in the, the property in uh, Inwood, the 150 acres that we bought from mm -hmm. National Fruit. Uh, that's the, the next high school up in that area. Okay. So, okay. And that should be in the next five years. And, you know, who knows? The way our growth is, it could be longer, it could be sooner. But, um, you know, we have to take a little bit at a time, and we have so many needs that um, – 
we're just thrilled to get this $25 million. And I want to correct a comment that I made yesterday. We didn't sure. get $25 million last year. We just got this $25 million. Well, Ron Stevens uh, uh, made a presentation last year to the SBA, and for some reason all presentations were halted then and not funded because I think the of the overcost for other projects that had already been started around the state. So the SBA gave that money to projects to finish their um, already uh, in progress projects. So that was a mistake I made and I wanted to clear that up. So our ask was 25 million and that's what we got, which makes our total bond 150 million. All right, Matt Miller. So I, Jackie, were, were you finishing there? Did you have something else yes, to add? Yes, I'm finished. Okay, no, I just finished. wanted to make sure. No, I was just going to ask about, you, you mentioned this This will be in, in the Marlowe area, uh, Marlowe Elementary School. Is it one of the older schools in the county right now? It's one of the 100-year-old schools, right. but Marlowe will still be open. It will be a pre-K center um, along with Bennington will be a pre-K center down in that area. And then the schools that we would like to open will be a, a K-1 and 2 and 3 and 5. So uh, that's, that's what's on our radar now. You know, things, things could change as far as the makeup, or uh, I don't think so. But, you know, the board has a lot of discussions about um, how we want the school to look. Um, and that all goes back to our architects, what they think the – the uh, ground will, the, the land will work with there as far as building a school. So um, it's exciting. We're excited about it, as we are about all of our projects. We have so many projects in the pipeline. It, it keeps all of our board members and especially the board, board office busy, um, keeping track and, and starting a new project daily. Um, you know, we have so many HVAC things going on, um, safe school entrances, on and on and on and on. So it's a busy time in Berkeley County Schools. But getting $25 million from the SBA is just, um, it's just wonderful. It helps that it's an election year for the governor, too, running for Senate. Yeah, yeah I, I noticed that. Yeah. <laughs> a, lot of pic, a lot of picture taking. Uh-huh. Jackie, this is John Gilstrap. Congratulations. Um, I'm curious, kind of roll the clock back a little bit. The strategy in that the went into crafting the proposal for these grants, if <clears throat> taking $25 million just as a number, we you swung for the fences and got $25 million split between essentially two big projects, as opposed to a million dollars for 25 small projects for the 100-year-old schools and, and what have you. Is that a strategic decision? Uh, because it's easier to get big projects done than it is little projects? Um, I'm not sure I understand your question. Well, I mean, it, it, we got 100-year-old schools, right? So we have schools that that uh, we're going to build two brand-new modern schools, and that's, and that's wonderful, but the building of those schools does not necessarily improve the conditions in the 100-year-old schools. So not, I'm not trying to throw a shadow on any of this, but I'm curious, was there a discussion – in crafting the application for the grant to take a bunch of smaller bites to do smaller improvements to a lot of the existing schools as opposed to building two brand new ones? Well, first let me say, uh, and, and I don't know if you've ever been in our 100-year-old schools, but they are in excellent shape. So uh, even though they're 100 years old, if you go if you go in Marlowe and Bennington, um, you will be amazed at how they look. So that's why we will continue to use those schools. Now, are you asking why we didn't ask for a bigger chunk of money? No, I, I just, I'm, I'm curious what, there's a strategy that goes into putting together any proposal, I presume. And I don't, I don't know if you were in on the actual crafting oh, you mean of the proposal. you in the bond proposal yes. or the proposal for the, the SBA? SBA. Oh, yeah, there, there's a strategy. I mean, you, 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 you sort of know ahead of time what you think you can get you know you, you can't be greedy there's there were 28 other counties out there asking for money and if you're greedy um you could end up with 
not as much at all as what you'd like to. So you you know you have to um, you have to ask for what you think you can get. Would we have liked to have more? Sure, mm-hmm. but there are other counties out there that have big projects like we do, and, and you know you get some advice from uh, individ- other individuals that have been through this process and um, that helps you along the way with what you think you can get and and um, come out with all of it, which is a which is really a a um, major accomplishment because many times you might ask for twenty five million and you might get fifteen. So um, getting all of our twenty five million was um, quite a feat. That's terrific. Now, how how does that actually? How do you find out? Did you get an email that says, "Hey, congratulations, you got it," or is it a live announcement? Well, and Ron could. Um, talk more about that i know over the years you got an you you knew when the sba awards were going to be you were going to get notice of it and that you could should probably come to charleston on that day and sometimes you in the past would go and sometimes you wouldn't um but ron did go because i uh, i would have wanted to be there myself um not in this case, but if I was superintendent, the superintendents were instructed to show up on that day and they would find out, um, it's like opening a Christmas package, you, you know, it's what presents you're going to get. So listening, honey. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. John would like $25 $1. million yes. for Christmas. <laughs> Where does this kind of put us um, when you look at the population right now in our school system um, to be able to add these elementary schools? Uh, again, Rob asked the question earlier, you know, a new high school. Uh, how, how does this kind of set us up for the facilities and, and what we really need? Uh, and and is this need for current or is this need really with future in mind and the growth in mind? Well, we we definitely plan for growth. Um, we in our projects we added on for growth, which has always occurred in past bonds. We always added on for growth, but nobody could ever predict how fast Berkeley County is growing or would grow or will continue to grow. I mean, we have estimates on that, um, and we added that into our um, square footage needs for these new schools. So, uh, and um, as been said in the past, in the past, I don't know how many years, Musselman High School uh, has had um, many, many rooms built on just to um, – uh, handle our needs so uh, we've built on everywhere we can build on with um the land that we have and and you know that's another thing always looking for land we're always looking for good land for future um projects so we always have to be one step ahead it, it's a full-time job um and mr stevens has done a really good job he's put a lot into working with this um bond and, and these projects and trying to stay ahead of everything working with our architects and all that comes back for the board for our approval so um i, I think we're we're on top of everything and hopefully it, what berkeley county has a bright future but it's a future with that continues with um, rapid growth Jackie, if land is an issue going forward, and I don't know that it is necessarily, but if it is, certainly land costs money, is building up instead of spreading out more the solution to high schools of the future? Well, um, we are talking about that. You know, that that um, has come up in our conversations. Um, you know, we're, we're heavily talking about whether we go out or up. Um, mm-hmm. Because you're right, you know, if land, if you want to put two schools on a property instead of one or vice versa, and I'm not talking about this where we are now uh, down to that property, but in the future, uh, depending on your acreage, do you spread out and be able to add rooms that way or do you go up? So, yeah, that's that's a discussion we are having. Very good. And uh, you know what? I think I 
was confused earlier I, when I was talking about the site of the next high school. Arden was what was in my mind, and Marlowe's what ended up coming out of my brain. So my apologies on that. Yeah, I was going to say I hadn't heard anything about a high school down in that area. Yeah, so. no. New, the rumor started here. The rumor just started <laughs> right here. Just started right You're here today. starting a rumor, Rob, but that's not necessary. <laughs> yep, it's time to lock I'll me up. I'll be getting emails and texts about that, you know. I know, especially from the Hedgesville contingent, because they want, they want, I'm looking at the Facebook comments. There's, there's a need for some Hedgesville replacements out there apparently too i know i i saw them before i got on so indeed uh jackie will uh, it be likely that berkeley county will go back next year with another 25 million dollar request um we won't um i i don't know about that uh, i i don't see that happening um not this fast uh -huh. uh, but i ne you never say never because you never know what the uh logistics are or where we are or who's governor or how much money's being given out and if it's our turn and so you have to look at all that you said if it's our turn it the fact that the money has come in this year does that mean that you're likely not to see more SBA money for any period of time or again it's it's simply based on the projects each year and what the SBA deems as the, the most needed and, and what they will fund? Well, I, I think it's the most needed and what they will fund. And, you know, we definitely have the need down in this area. And I'm very thankful for Sandy Hamilton that's on the SBA. She really, um, she supports all the counties, but, you know, she knows the need here. So that helps us quite a bit. She, she can um, stress how important it is uh, for us to have additional buildings and um, additional funds because of our growth. So um, I think if, you know, the, the more we build, the faster that we'll be able to ask for funds. But it is a process. You can't, you know, this, this will be three years. I'm not sure we can go back for that three years or not. But uh, if we can, we'll be right there at the table. I was going to say, in Berkeley County, with the growth, it seems to me that you could request funds to build a new school almost every year or at least refurbish one. Yeah, uh, we could if yeah. we could have the funds. Jackie, you thanks. You know, all that depends on bond, passing bonds. So, Well, thanks very much for your time this morning and yesterday as well. We appreciate your experience in these matters because you've been through this before, and uh, we love the insight, so thank you kindly. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it.